This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is yet another Wednesday night when we come to your home through open talk and, come and speak into your situation. We have brought in guests here who have been a big blessing, who have been a big encouragement. Because, of, because open talk is an open forum where we can talk anything. You talk or I talk. We hear one another and we move forward. It is it, it, within open talk, it is intended to bring information, to encourage, to bring in correction or even a rebuke and to guide and to counsel and to educate. So whatever you receive, may it help you, may it be, become a portion of your life. And on this Wednesday, we are gathered uh, again in our, in our studios and I have a very, very special guest very, very special guest uh, who is going to, we are going to talk to and is going to talk to us. He is one of our pastors. This is none other but uh, Pastor Patrick Gomba. Pastor Patrick Gomba is our pastor in Deliverance Church, Quare City. If you didn't know there was a city like that, you better know now. There is a Deliverance Church, Quare City in Medica Estate here in Nairobi. So open up your spirit and I pray that you will allow the Lord to speak to you through uh, Pastor Gomba or through the words that will come. Uh, Pastor, you are so much, so much welcome to Open Talk. This is a, a forum where we just talk our hearts out. We just give our stories and someone is going to be blessed out of that story. Just yes. bring your greetings. Thank you so much, Papa, for making me uh, time for me to come in this place and even thank you so much my viewers wherever you are my name is pastor patrick gomba as bishop has said and i come from deliverance church quarry city in uh, ongata rongai that's where i minister so i'm happy to be here i know we'll share many things and the lord will bless us together thank you yes. thank you so much uh, so much pastor yes okay now te tell me you know mm. you know when uh, a lot of people will see you, mm. or the congregation you preach to, mm. the people you preach to, mm. they think, some of them think you live in heaven, yeah. and you land on Sunday morning, yes. and bring in the word. Yes. Uh, but you and I know mm. that we are Kenyans, yeah. and we don't go to heaven, <laughs> but we communicate with heaven. Sure. Now, where were you born? I was born in Busia, that is in Western Kenya, in 1972, the month of July 14th. Uh -huh. Yes. In, in Busia? In Busia County. Okay. By then it was a district. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And your family? My family, my father was a second born to his family. And uh, also I'm the, sec the third born after my, my mother giving birth to several children and they were dying. And then I was born after about many children dying before me. And when I was born, my mother, according to the tradition is in that in those areas, I was taken out of the out of the uh, out of the home, and I was uh, collected by a muganga, mm. and uh, that muganga brought me in back in, in the in the home, so that uh, he did some ritual. She did some ritual so that I may not die, mm -hmm. like the other who uh, died before me, mm -hmm. and that's why even my ear was uh, pierced, and uh, something was put in so that I may be protected from anything that was killing my mother's children. Oh, is that so? Yes. You have a PST here? Yes. You can see it. I, I thought it was just this, this, this thing that the men were doing the other day of piercing their ears. No, no, no. Oh, okay. This one has a covenant. Mm. It, has a co it had a, co a covenant. Yeah, I think we'll come to that, whether it has or it had. We'll yes. Come to, yes. We'll come to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we will want to know that you are operating under two covenants or <laughs> under one covenant. Yeah. Anyway, nevertheless, so mm. you actually, uh, you are the first survivor yes. in the family. Yeah. Do you, do you have other, other siblings? And now after me, there is only one girl. Mm -hmm. No, we are t just two. We are just two? Yes. So was she also pierced? No. Or is only you who had It's two only me that was pierced. Was, mm. Because now, after me surviving, mm. now the mother knew that she can give birth and the children will survive. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. Mm. So you, were, you, your parents were never, were never Christians or were they? They were just religious people because, uh, but my father was a drunkard. Also, my mother used to take some alcohol and she used also to, to mix alcohol, the, the so-called changa. Mm. 
mm. the, the Changa in our home area. It is known as Changa, and she was making one of the best Changa mm. known in those areas. Because you can even light it at like spirit and the, in a wakamoto. Uh, wow. That's the Changa that she was making mm. those times. That's when you were growing up? Yes. So did you own Jakidogo? Yes. Oh. I started taking Changa when I was in class five. In class five? Yes. You headed for breakfast, for dinner, <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> My mother used to say that, uh, my son, take it a little, mm. because when you take it, you have uh, something that is good. You are carrying something good, mm. because when you take changa, that small changa, many customers will come. Mm. So she could make sure that I, at least I test it, so that many people may come and uh, take the changa. Mm. Yes. So wh and where did you go to school? I started going to school early, as, uh, because I finished my primary education in 1988. And uh, my father could not take me further because we are very poor in, in our home. Mm -hmm. So he could not take me to the high school. And he decided just to take me to, to the Juakali mm -hmm. in sewing suits. That's where I was taken. So you are a cobbler? Yeah, I, was, I am a good tailor. Oh, a tailor or a shoe repair? A tailor. A tailor? Yes. Oh, I thought you were, you were repairing shoes. No, no, no. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. And uh, your sister, is she married or is she still at home? Yeah, my sister, she's married. She's, uh, she has a home. Also, after me bo being born again, I started doing some work in our home because I knew that our home was not in a good place. So I started preaching to them, my father before he died, and also my mother before she died. And also my sister, I preached to her, I witnessed, witnessed to her. And now she's, born, she's a born again woman mm. uh, with a family of four children. How did you get born again? Uh, there's some of, a friend of mine who was in Deliverance Church on Gatarungai. And I used to see how they used to live with the family, how they used to do their things. And I was admiring their life. And I was saying in my heart that one time when I'll be born again, I'd like to be like this man and even to live a good life. That was my desire. Mm. Because I used to see many people who were born again, but pretenders. And I really hated that. And I was saying in my heart, when I'll give my life to Jesus Christ, I'll be somebody who dedicate his life to God uh, mm. very well. So how did you? So after that, uh, uh, there's a, I, I had my, my, my late wife who was not born again and also was not born again. And somebody was coming into our house to used to preach to us and I could not accept. So after some time, there's a time that it came that I was feeling that I, I was like dying. Mm -hmm. Because I had separated with my wife. She had gone to her family and I was just left alone. Because I used to take Changa and I was a drunken person and my wife could fight. Sometimes I could hit her very hard. And uh, now she was, she saw that uh, these things are getting worse and worse. So she decided to run away. And I was left alone. That's when I was feeling something in me that if you die, something was asking me, if you die, where will you go to? And the man that was preaching to me, he was also a tailor like me. So early in the morning, I decided to go and search for that person. Mm. I went to his place, his workshop, uh, the man called Peter Kamala, and uh, I was telling him, I'm feeling as if I'm dying, and uh, a question is just passing through my heart. If you die, where, where will you go to? And so he told me, God can never hear the prayer of a sinner. Mm. So you need to repent your sin and to receive Christ as your personal savior. Even before he said much, I already knelt down and I said to, me, to him, please, can you just pray for me so that I may be born again? Mm -hmm. And he prayed for me. And after praying for me, something I was just feeling in my heart, the peace and that joy. Mm -hmm. And I started even singing. Mm -hmm. Yes, when I started I work from that place, I was singing, I was singing some songs in my heart that uh, mm -hmm. I could not remember those, things, but those songs, but I was just singing in my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's how I gave my life to Jesus Christ. That was in February 16th, 1999. Wow. So you have, gone, you have gone to this man's house, Mr. Kamala. Kamala. Yes. And he has prayed for you. Yes. You are going home singing. Singing. In your heart. Yes. From there? 
my wife was at home at his at her home in Busia also she came also she was coming from Busia also and uh, on Sunday because she ran away and she left me with a uh, one of my daughter the firstborn now she's a teacher and she was she's still young and on that on Sunday I went to deliverance church on Gatarongai mm. and it, it came a time that uh, they were introducing the visitors mm. I was not used of that mm. so when they were saying the visitors can you stand mm. I stood mm. and after standing uh, I said uh, I got born again uh, this week mm. and I'm happy to come here because uh, I have a friend here pro called Protas Karani mm. and uh, he, I used to admire his life and that's why I'm here. Mm. And uh, now I was taken by one of the leaders in that church who is now the retired uh, Reverend P uh, David Njeroge with Priska Njeroge. They took me to the discipleship class and they said from Sunday you'll be coming in this class. Mm. And we'll, you'll be taught how to walk with God, to read the Bible, to pray, and uh, all that. Mm. So I found myself in Deliverance Church and also in that discipleship class. Mm. And I was a good student. Mm -hmm. Even Mama Gashego, you can, you, can, you, can, you can affirm that. Mm -hmm. I used to be a very punctual uh, student. Before the time of a discipleship class, I was in a class also wiping the, the chairs and making sure that the class is ready. Mm -hmm. That's what I used to do. Wow. Yes. So how did your wife come back? Now, after that, I was taught with Mama Gashego, mm -hmm. who is uh, Reverend Chiroge's wife, and she was telling me, you must uh, go and pick your wife because you are not as now as you are born again now. You cannot marry another mm -hmm. woman. Mm. You must go for your wife because mm. we had two children with that lady. Mm. So I prayed. I took time to pray. She taught me how to pray and fast. And uh, she was teaching me about uh, spiritual warfare because I just <coughs> talked to her and, and told her about uh, our family there back in Busia, powers of witchcraft, how you used to, the night runners used to disturb us during the, the night back in the village they were running without clothes and all the sort of things so she told me you must pray and you must fast and then go and pick your wife mm. and i prayed for three days fasting then i went back home in busia mm. when i reached back home i found my father and uh, my father would not, do not did not want to see me even my mother mm. because i was beating that girl and even i had hurt even some part of her body mm. And she picked all her things and she went to her family. So when I reached home, my father was so furious with me and with even my mother mm. because they know that I used to, to drink a lot and I was somebody that was somehow crook. Mm. And I told them, Daddy and Mom, now I'm a changed person. Mm. I'm a born again person. Mm. I received Christ. Mm. And now I want to go and pick my wife. Mm. And they were, my father was telling me, are you, are you serious? And are you sure you want to go and take your wife? I told him, yes, mm -hmm. because I'm the one who uh, offended her. And I want to go and just uh, tell her, I've, uh, I've, um, just forgive me for what I did for you. And my father was telling me, you know our custom in this area. If you have been fighting your wife, mm -hmm. when you go to your, their place, you will be really be beaten mm -hmm. by the brothers. Mm -hmm. But I told my father, I know that, but I'll go because I'm a changed person. If they'll accept me, well and good. If it, they don't ask, accept me, also I'll know what to do. Mm -hmm. And because I had prayed and in me, something was telling me, just go and don't pick anybody. Mm -hmm. Because these people, when you pick them, you'll pick, uh, it was, my father was telling me, at least take five men, mm -hmm. strong men, mm -hmm. those who have eaten Ugali properly. Yeah, yeah. Because when the war broke, uh, when Vitas mm. Kianza, mm. they'll know how to defend you and to fight back. Mm. Because it, it is normally a war. Mm. If they find that you have been beating their girl, mm. they really fight you. Mm. So I went, uh, I prepared, and my father t told me, if you go, be prepared to be beaten. Mm. So I said, yes, I'll just go. So I went there. I found my wife in, the, in her home with my, my little girl. Mm. They were just there. She was shocked because I just entered uh, straight into their home. Mm. And according to our tradition there, mm. you cannot just enter into a, a family mm. without even some wazes 
and some other people were escorting you. Mm. But I just went alone without even wearing a coat. Mm. I was just wearing a shirt mm. and I just entered in that home and she was wondering, how did you come here? Mm. And uh, I was thinking she would be furious with me. Mm. But uh, something happened. She just in, well, come to me in, my, in the father's house, and then she ran away, went, went to the shop, buy, buy, bought meat, and even did something, and brought, and uh, she brought me a soda. And I was taking a soda as she's cooking there in the, in the, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. Uh -huh. So I was just waiting uh, for the war, but uh, something was happening. In me, I was just praying, oh God, don't allow me to be ashamed. Just protect me. And surely God did it. Mm. When uh, it was uh, I'd, I'd eaten, many people came because those houses, they are thatched houses and a very big house, mm. that, that, that it, is a, it is round. Mm. And uh, they were, the women were sitting down, the men were sitting around the, the house, mm. and now questions were coming mm. uh, from uh, Waze. Mm. One Waze was asking me, where you came from? Hakuna Waze uko. You came alone. Mm. I said, no, I'm not Kichwangum. Mm. Because Mimi and Likosia will you, I've decided just to come alone. Mm. Because if I come with many people, what mm. Kenda I don't want that. Mm. Eh. So they took time to talk. Finally they said, before we make judgment, mm. we want you to now to say Usalimie this antish. And because I know according to those places, when you go to those places, you must carry something. Mm. So I'd carried several envelopes. Mm. Yeah. For the aunties. For the aunties, for the uncle, for mm. the father, for the mother, and for the shosho. Mm. Yes. And I'd written them, mm. their names over those envelopes. Mm. So when they said aunties, I took the envelope for the auntie, I gave them. The uncles, mm. after that, they said, we see now you are a changed person. Mm. So you not pick your wife today, but we have blessed you. Mm. And we, we, are, we are happy now that you have changed. Mm. And we want to see a test, we want to hear a testimony from your wife. Mm. So you just go, but you, you are not going with your wife today. Mm. And I was asking them, why? Can you just release my wife and, so that we may go together? Mm. They refused completely. Mm. They said, you cannot go with your wife. You just go and you'll come after one week. So I went, but we, we, as I was walking out, my wife escorted me mm. and we were talking. Mm. And she told me, do what, my husband? You just come tomorrow. Come tomorrow and pick me. Mm. I'll prepare everything for the child. Mm. And you just come at around uh, 11 in the morning mm. and we shall go. Mm. So that's how what I did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and uh, my wife was ready. She yeah. found me somewhere with, where we were. You know those days were not, we are, there was no mobile phones. Yeah. So <laughs> I just waited for her somewhere. Mm. And she came with a baby. And because I, uh, I had a bicycle, and then I carried her with the bags and with the, with the, with the baby. You carried her on, on the bicycle? On the bicycle. Wow. And we went back home. Mm. Yes. So what did your father say when she, she got there? My father was amazed. She yeah. was, uh, he was uh, wondering, how did you do it? Yeah. I told him, my father, I told you that I've changed. Yeah. And something has happened into my life. Yeah. I'm born again. Yeah. And I've been taught about faith. Mm. Believing God. Mm. That's why I prayed and fasted and I knew that I'll go and I'll get my wife. Mm. And my father was saying, okay, surely we see some change in you. Mm. Yes. So when you went there, mm. was she ever asked whether she wants you or she doesn't want you? She was asked. Mm. And she was saying she wants to go back to the husband. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And when did you, did you start preaching to them? My father started preaching to them after, that is, was in 2002. Uh, after I was, uh, after I had finished uh, the disciples clubs class, and also we were doing the NLTC, those days, mm -hmm. NLTC. After graduating to NLTC, that's when I had a mission to Isiolo. Mm -hmm. And I went there, we did door to door for the Manyatas and all those places. And after coming back, I was feeling something now. Mm. I'm ready now to do something for God. Mm. And that's when I went back home. And I was telling my father, you must be born again. Mm. Yes. And my, father, my mother also. Mm. And I had a Bible, a, a black Bible, a red one, a small one. Mm. And I was telling them some scriptures. I was showing them some scriptures. Mm. 
uh, the, the scriptures of John mm -hmm. uh, and of also Romans chapter 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I was telling them, my father was <laughs> joking with me mm -hmm. and he was telling me, how can you preach to me? Mm -hmm. You are just my son. Mm -hmm. I also see you, you are just walking here naked. How, what can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I was telling me, my, my father, you know my father, I'm born again and something has happened to me mm -hmm. and I know there's life after this life. Mm -hmm. And for you to get that life, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. You must be born again. There's no shortcut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after, sometimes I was taking some missionaries from uh, here on Gatarungai, taking them to Busia every August. I used to do some mission there, mm -hmm. even till to date. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing those missions. Mm -hmm. And they have bared fruits. You have seen, even there's a church that we have, uh, we started, uh, there's a pastor started with another ministry. And we have been, t I've been taking missionaries there, preaching mm -hmm. there. And that church has grown. Mm -hmm. And my father also, later on, he came and got saved. Wow. And he became a member of that church. Oh. And people were saying to him, why are you going to these uh, churches of young, 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 young people? Mm. Uh, this is the church of old men. Mm. Why are you going to these churches of uh, people making noise, mm. noise, shouting, people praying overnight? Uh, mm. You, Mze, you seem you, uh, you are not uh, in the mm. right way. But he said, my son has preached to me and I've made my, uh, my, my commitment to Jesus Christ mm. and I'm not following this, those young boys. I'm following Jesus Christ. And I was very, very happy. Hey. He died a born again muse. And your mom? My mom, I'm not sure, uh, but I used to talk to her mm. before she died. And she was a strong Catholic, a strange Catholic. Mm. But I used to teach her and tell her about the word of God. Mm. Uh, but she used to tell me that, you know, my son, me, I know my ways with God and I love God. Mm -hmm. uh, but I used to pray for them even whenever I go to home. She could even take, take me, doing door to door, house, house to house, mm -hmm. preaching to people and even praying for those who are sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, people started calling, calling her Mama Pastor. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go back home in the village, mm -hmm. she used to take me, there's a mother, there's, some, there's a lady some, sick somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's a man sick somewhere. There's a place, there's a, 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 a trouble. Mm -hmm. So she could take me to those places, to those houses. Mm -hmm. And I could go to those places and preach to those people and pray for them. And others were getting healed. Others were being saved. That's why my mother was known as a mama pastor. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how, how did you uh, end up being in uh, Deliverance Church, Quarry City? Now, it, it came in 2000, in 2000, the year 2000, mm -hmm. there was a church that was planted by Deliverance Church on Gatarungai. Mm -hmm. That is called Deliverance Church in Kaimurunya. That's where we went with uh, Reverend Jeroge, with his wife. Mm -hmm. And because uh, his wife was a so much role model to me, I didn't want to lose this mama. Mm -hmm. When I heard that she, they are being planted somewhere, mm -hmm. I decided to follow, mm -hmm. to follow them. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, uh, we stayed with them, and that's when I, I entered now into real ministry. Mm. Because now, you know, they are somehow elderly, and many of their jobs, they could send me, you gomba, go and do this, you gomba, go and do recite for that woman, mm. go and see that muse. Mm. Uh, there's a time when uh, two ladies quarreled uh, in their, uh, where they, they live and they were our members, mm. and they also fought. Mm. After fighting, physical. they were, yes, physical, mm. and they were taken to the police. Mm. Uh, they were taken to police. When they were taken to police, when Mze was, uh, Reverend Jeroge was called, he told me, go and see what happened, and also mm. uh, give me the report. Mm. When I went there, mm. the OCS, the OCS, the, 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 OCS. Uh, yeah, in the officer in charge. In charge. Mm. He was telling me, you pastor, how do, how do you deal with these people? Because you have not taught them the word. Mm. They should not be fighting. Mm. Why are they here? Mm. And I told them, uh, the OCS, you know, we teach people the word. It's now upon the people to take the word the way they are being taught. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, as, as, he was, as if he wanted to preach to me. But I told him, when, I, when I told him, him like that, he said, okay, now, Take these women and go and teach them the word. Mm. So I took these women, I took them to a hotel somewhere, I bought them some tea mm. with chapati because they had slept there mm. and they were hungry. Mm. 
Mm. So I was just telling them how Christians should be. Mm. And then I gave uh, Reverend Jiroge the report. Mm. I found myself now, Reverend Jiroge could send me in places. Even there's a time how he would send me to go and bury a certain lady who had come to her church in mm. just one week mm. and she died and she was being taken to Kakamega. Mm. And she told, Reverend Jiroge told me, go and bury that woman. Mm. She gave me, Reverend Jiroge gave me that book uh, of service, mm. the service book. Mm. And he told me, go and just preach, mm. whatever you'll preach, mm. and use this, uh, this illustration mm. to bury that woman. Mm. And I went in Kakamega, mm. and I did that job. And I preached, and about 23 people came to the Lord. Wow. Yes. So after that time, people started calling me pastor, pastor, mm. pastor, pastor. And I could just continue serving under Pastor Njiroge mm. for 12 good years. Yes. So after about uh, seven years is when Reverend Jiroge uh, called Bishop Tumising mm. and uh, he said that he want to commission you. And that's when he, I was told that you must uh, now make your marriage legal. Mm. Uh, you must halalisha your marriage. Because mm. uh, Babu, I just married Ile Kenyeji. Patana kwa sokoni, mutu wakachukua nguo zake kwa dirisha na tukaanza maisha. So when you come to you must make everything straight. Yeah. Hey, sasa lazima ufanye hiyo mambo, document upate, mm. liposa uanze maisha ingine hata ya kuwa mchungaji. Mm. Hey, sasa ndiyo later on, after hiyo ku, 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 kupata that certificate, mm. ndiyo Bishop Timi Singakuja, and I was commissioned as a pastor. That was in 2007. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yo kanisa, walikuwa meanza ama nyingi yomunianza? Yo kanisa yalikuwa yetu meanza. Wakati Reverend Jiroge huko, it started new. And tulikuwa na some challenges, many challenges kwa sababu we were preaching na people were not coming to church. We were just preaching to ourselves from Mungata Rungai. And it was something like, it was so much discouraging. But we keep on... Uh, preaching, keep on preaching. There's a time that in Lifika, they were saying that we close this church. Oh. And when we sat down, that's when we call, they called me mm. among the, those leaders who were with Pastor Njiroge. Mm. And they were saying we want to close this church because people are not coming, we are not seeing as if you are doing anything here. And they asked me a question. Mm. Uh, you, what do you see mm. about this church? And I said, before we close this church, can we go before God and ask him, mm -hmm. if he say that we close the church, mm -hmm. we'll just close it up. Mm -hmm. And if he say that we don't close the church, mm -hmm. we shall continue. So we went for prayer in Cataloni for about seven days. Mm -hmm. When we were praying there with the Reverend Jiroge, uh, something came to me mm -hmm. during the night, a dream, uh, is it a dream or a vision? Mm -hmm. And I saw a lady giving to us 100,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. And the church was struggling so much. Mm. Every support was coming from the Levana Church on Gatarongai, mm. paying the rents, even taking care of the pastor mm. and everything. And so, so much people were so much discouraged. So when I saw that, after that prayer, uh, I came, we came from Cataloni early in Sunday in the morning and we went direct to the church. And after our church service, do you know somebody was a friend to Reverend Jiroge? He gave him around 16,000. By that time, 2004, that was good money. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Njiroge was telling me, Gomba, somebody has brought us some money, the money that we saw in the dream. Mm -hmm. And I told him, no, I saw 100,000. That is 16,000, but I saw 100,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's wait. Mm -hmm. After one week, he was called by somebody, mm -hmm. a friend. And when he went to show them, he was given a brown envelope, mm. just uh, like this one, a, a size of, uh, a, a size mm. of this, this paper. Mm. And uh, he, that, before he went, he called, he, that lady called him and asked him, do you have a church account? He said, yes. We had already opened a national bank uh, here in Nairobi, mm. and the uh, account of the Lima Church in Gaimuronia. And uh, when uh, he said yes, he told him to come. When he went, he was given that envelope. After giving the envelope, he came straight to the bank. And when he was in the bank, he was counting the money. 
he counted, he counted, and he found the money was a hundred thousand Kenya shillings. Wow. And we, eh. we celebrated. He called me and said, eh. you know, son, the money that you saw in the dream, mm. that money is in the account right now. Mm. I was very happy. Mm. I was very happy. And that, that thing motivated us now mm. to continue uh, doing the work of God in Kaimurunya. Mm. It was a hard place. It mm. was a very tough place. But we continued. And after that, we started now searching for land. Mm. Yes. And uh, miraculously, we got the land that even the church is still up to now, mm -hmm. that half acre. Somebody sold to us, it was around 570,000. Mm -hmm. And even before we finished paying, uh, the owner of the land went to Kajiado and brought us the title, and even before we finished paying. Mm -hmm. And also he gave us about 20,000 from, he deducted 20,000. And mm -hmm. he said, I'm also giving, I'm contributing to the work of God. Wow. Yes. Okay. And many things started happening to that church. Mm. After we buying that land, we fenced it. There's a who gave us tree. We fenced that, that land. And we were coming for that rental, rental places. We, we used to come there because it was, it was just a, flea, a field. Mm. We used to come there on every Sunday after service. We come there, we pray, we speak to the ground. Mm. And finally, God opened doors and we started building that place. Mm. Also, we continue praying. Every month, we used to go to Cataloni for prayer. Mm. Every month, at least for one, one week. Mm. Now, God started doing great things in that church. Mm. One person gave us 15 lorries of stones wow. that constructed that church. Mm. Uh, other people were giving cement. Things were just mm. happening. Mm. Yeah, and that church, when, it was started, when we started building it, it never stopped mm. until the church was okay. complete. That is in Kaimurunya. Kaimurunya. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was in, now in 2004. And you are in Kware. Or Kaimurunya is I in Kware. I used to live in Kware, but we used to go in Kaimurunya. Mm -hmm. It's around seven kilometers from Kware. Oh. Yes. So how did you start the, the church in Kware? Now it came time that I was praying and doing God's work because I normally do crusades and missions Mm. Most, most of the time. Mm. And uh, one time I was, uh, was praying in 2008, I just felt in my heart that uh, you need to go to Kware. Mm. Because Kware is a slumish place, mm. a very a place that was looking so dirty. There's a lot of changa, there's a lot of many things happening. Mm. Children, you see uh, small children doing those funny, funny things. Mm. And I just felt I, we should plant a church here. And that's when in 2010, 11 there, I went to Reverend Jiroga and told him, and uh, in my heart I'm feeling I want to go to Kware and to start work there. And he told me, okay, we shall plant it and we shall go also to Bishop Njoga, also to let him know because Kware is, is not far away from Deliverance Church on Gatarungai. So when we went to Joga, he also said that uh, it is a good thing. We plan and see what to do. That's when, uh, after that, uh, the church we uh, was uh, now sent to Kware in 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes, in 2012. Okay. That is now uh, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. maybe before we look at the growth of the church. Yes. I heard you say you are, your wife was, is, is late. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now my wife, my late wife, she was called Gladys, mm -hmm. and uh, we got married in 2000, uh, in 1994, mm -hmm. 1994 November. Now we are living very well, but uh, after we coming in Kware, doing the work of God, she was very much supportive. She was very much of help to me, and uh, God has had blessed, blessed us with uh, four children. After me bringing her back, we got a son who is now in, in the campus in Jekwat here, mm -hmm. and also another daughter. We have four children, the last born to Gladys. She's in Form 3 now. And uh, it was a time that we were planning for the wedding of my first born daughter. And uh, uh, I had called some friends to come and also help me to plan the wedding of that girl. Because she's, uh, it was about uh, three weeks to the wedding. And we were planning with my wife and I left her in the house. 
she was uh, drawing water and uh, I told her let me go and uh, uh, do whatever do see some those those people that I was, was to go and see and uh, she said okay you just go let me just take some rest because uh, today I'm just in the house I'm I will be just be fetching some water so I went when I went uh, I found those people, we talked and we planned that we will be coming into a house on Saturday. It was on a Thursday. So, uh, and I was to go and see some, a lady that was selling us some, a piece of land somewhere. When I called her, she told me um, she was not in the office, but uh, you just, uh, uh, I'll send you the surveyor. Tomorrow, you'll go with him. That was on Friday. You'll go with him to go and see the land where you, you have you been uh, paying your land slowly by slowly. So after that, I say, because I don't have now much, to, much thing to do, let me go to the church, into the office, and prepare the sermon for Sunday, because now I have uh, some freedom. So I went to the church. When I went to church, I said, let me start with the prayer. Then after prayer, I'll search for the scripture and what I'll preach on Sunday. But I were, and in, in that office, I just knelt down and I just started praying. When I was praying, a very heavy sleep and a deep one just took over. I found myself asleep. I slept as from on my knees, from two up to five. Wow. At five, I was waked up by a phone call by that daughter of mine. She called me. I saw her number, her, her number. When I received the call, she was asking me, Daddy, Daddy, where are you? Mm. I told her I'm in the, in the church. Mm. She told me, please, 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 run very fast. Mom is not well mm. in the house. I asked her, what is happening? Mm. She was just now crying. Mom has collapsed in the, uh, she has collapsed in the house. Mm. I was shocked. I started with something like uh, something fear just gripped me. Mm. And I took a border border around the church there and ran to the house. When I went to the house, I found the house flooded with water. Every room is full of water. Mm. The water was past the ankle mm. in the house, every room. Mm. And I ran to the, to the bedroom, my bedroom. Mm. I found my wife had vomited and she was a uh, melala to those is on any matapiko. So I nikam pindua and then kanza kumpanguza and the mouth was going gone sideways. And I was asking Gladys, Gladys, what is wrong? Because she was, she was not sick, she could not answer. Now I was somehow confused. My daughter was just crying. She was just crying, Daddy, 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 what happened to mom? I told her I was I'm not overly aware. Because you have just come from school and you have found your mama the way she is. Let us do whatever you can do to take her to the hospital. Mm. So I was trying to search for a car. I could not get a car. Mm. But there's a lorry that had brought some, uh, some sand in that uh, neighborhood. Mm. And they had already uh, finished pouring the sand down. And I just ran to that uh, driver, told him, please, can you just help me? I have a wife here, she's very sick, she cannot even walk. I left her in a good condition and now she's, she cannot even speak. Mm. So they told me, can you just go with this Makanga and bring, bring her? So I, called, I told the Makanga, please come and help me. Because she was uh, somehow with the, she was huge. Big body. Yeah, she had a big body. Mm. When we went to the house, uh, the water is full in the house. Mm. We are just going through the waters. And uh, she had uh, just, alikuwa mejifunika na hii nini ya kimasai. Unajua sasa ladies, they are not, awaendi mahali, awana mambo mingi. Sasa mejifunga tuyo na hiyo nini. So, nikajari kumbeba na that young man, and another lady pia kakuja, a neighbor, haka mshika migu, tuka mbeba, tuka mungisha kwa that lorry. So, the makanga kaenda nyuma, and the, the wife now was uh, between me and the driver, and the driver drove me to the hostel, up, up in a hospital called Mount Sinai. That's where I took her. When we reached there, before we reached there, I was talking to her. Gladys, what happened? She could not answer. But uh, it came a time that I asked her, when did you fall? 
and she just strained and she told me sasaba only that so i asked her unasikia nini nakuma she was telling she was just touching her head yeah, touching her head so when we reached the hospital the, the doctors came they took her with the with the with the, the, the machella took her to the ward they were taking care running trying to search for what is the problem they were not seeing the problem and some pastors who are my friends because uh, I'm also a chairman in the, in the fellowship of pastors in Kware mm -hmm. they were just coming in running in and praying doing spiritual warfare after two hours the mama was not waking up mm -hmm. she was just there but she was breathing mm -hmm. so I was wondering what is happening so that day was we were, we were referred to to either Kenyatta or Mbagadi. Mm -hmm. And because I knew Kenyatta, sometimes it, it is uh, hectic uh, to go to Kenyatta, mm -hmm. we were advised better to go to Mbagadi, then Mbagadi will be referred to Kenyatta. It will be an easy thing, it will be Mamuta uh, Chukuliwa mm Raka. -hmm. So we went to Mbagadi, when reaching to Mbagadi, before the doctor came, it was around midnight. Mm -hmm. So when we talk up, or Bada and you come tomorrow in the morning, the Angaliwe nini nini test is fine. I love the Angaliwe. So when you talk up, was you see Kuni Kenda Nyumbani? Sasa, I'm a quad admitted. I'm a quad admitted around one in the morning. Kuvika Nyumbani, my daughter Kanyon and Mebeba Nguo, she was so much shocked. When mom died, come here, Pana, she not died. Nile Nguo Zelo, I'm a quad. Ame nini ya melalia, mm -hmm. she had gone hiyo kususu, amikuwa mesusulia, sasa shika, anga heza kulana hizo. So ni kabeba, ni kamufunika na zingine, karudi. Mm -hmm. So ni kabeba nguwa zingine hiyo, early in the morning. And by the way, Bishop, that time I was praying mm -hmm. and fasting because of uh, the sermon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I had prepared the people that will be having a miracle Sunday on that Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I told people to come prepared. So mm -hmm. I was in the mood of prayer and fasting. So I continued praying and fasting. I said that even my wife, in this state, I'll not uh, break my fast. I'll continue fasting. So in the morning, I went back to Bagavi, and uh, the doctors, before they came, it took a long time. And when they came, and they I went to the ward. Now, many members of our church came, and they were praying for her. Other was, was started even crying, How, what is happening to her mama? The wedding is just about two weeks to come of the daughter, and now mm. she's here in the hospital. What will happen? And even visitors who are coming on Saturday in our house to plan the wedding, all those things are going to be my mind. Mm. But uh, when I went to the ward Sasaba, because she had alikuwa meshuka nywele ile style ingine na kuanga sijui naitwa aje za mama so uh, the ladies were kaona she was not comfortable akilala so they, they waka undo the nywele wakatoa nisha vizuri alafu wakampaka mafuta wakampanguza baadaye wakaenda that day me nilishinda huko mbagadhi so during in the evening that was on friday eh uh, daktari wananiambia Uyi mama tumefanya test na tukaona ni kama she, is, uh, she has uh, the meningitis, an infection of meningitis. Mm. But we need to come even tomorrow so that we may do further test. That was on Saturday now. Mm. And before I went, I went to her bed and I was talking to her. Gladys, you know you are a strong woman. Mm. She, she was just shaking the head. Mm. You are a powerful woman. She was just shaking her head. Mm. This is not your place. Mm. She was just shaking her head. And I told her, you know, you are a mother of many, mm -hmm. shaking her head. And I was telling her, do you know you can, your daughter cannot wed if you are not there? Mm -hmm. You are the one that will introduce your, your daughter to her husband. Mm -hmm. She was just, just shaking her head. And finally, she just smiled to me. Mm -hmm. She gave me a smile. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a hand. Mm -hmm. And she was shaking, shaking my hand. Mm -hmm. And I was now feeling at least my heart I, so there's some hope. Mm -hmm. Even the doctors are now telling me, you see, we have the medicine is about to at least in a fana kazi. Mm -hmm. So, but then I prayed, and after praying, nikamfunika vizuri, 
kila mahali ndio aspigo na baridi usiku alafu mimi nikamwambia bye bye we shall see, see you tomorrow mm. nikatoka very late around saa moja jioni kaenda nyumbani the mother back home she's calling me uh, the, 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 the brothers they are calling me the brothers to, to my wife mm-hmm. my sister she's calling me my auntie sister to my father they are calling me because they have received report that my my wife is is very sick and she's in the hospital and she cannot talk so phone calls were coming from every co- every corner mm. so i went home that night i could not sleep i was just praying i was t- just telling god oh lord don't do not do not allow not allow i just buried my my father and after burying my father one year later on i buried my mother and now i'm just left home alone mm. and this is the the best friend in my life somebody that we have been going back home in the in the in the village in busia together and we stay in the with the, the house together she has been encouraging me to go back home doing many things together mm-hmm. and now she seems as if no, she, things are not going in the right direction i was wondering what will happen so i prayed i prayed i prayed now it came in the morning very early in the morning mm-hmm. i went to the hospital mm-hmm. And uh, the mother was calling me. How is my daughter? I told her I'm going to the hospital. I'll give a report after I reach to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So when I went to Mbagadi, uh, the doctors, when I found the doctor, the doctor were telling me, "You just wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. Wait a little bit." And I feel my patients were not uh, so that good mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see her. Mm-hmm. So uh, they told me just wait. Goja kidogo will tell you what when to go and see her. Nata sai sisa kuona magonjwa. So, kwa sababu the word was just next na mali daktari alikuwa. I said let me stretch my neck and see her bed because her bed was number 2 from the door. Mm. When I stretched my neck, I saw the bed empty. Mm. I just felt something unusual. Mm. What has happened? Mm. I didn't want my mind to 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 tell me that she was there mm. i wanted to speak to my mind that probably she has been taken to the ward somewhere or to an operation room or to some place mm. and uh, when the doctor saw that i stretched my my neck and saw the the empty bed mm. now they took me to their there's a co office there mm. i was taken to the co office with my clothes i had i had carried some clothes in a bag mm. to change her and even uh, some water even to panguza mm. so when uh, they saw when i saw the the empty bed they called me we entered in that office and the doctor was telling me do you know your wife was a very strong woman mm. yeah i said yes and uh, he kept he kept uh, repeating do you know your wife was a very strong woman mm. Yes I know that. Uh, so uh, later on one of them said your wife was a very strong woman but the sickness was very stronger than her. Mm-hmm. That's why we lost her yesterday night. Bishop that time. Sije mm-hmm. ipiga nduru in my life. Mm-hmm. My father died siku piga nduru mm-hmm. in our place what to piga nduru. Mm-hmm. My mother died people were expecting nitapiga nduru mm. but when i went there i would just come everything you can leave so like it was so painful to me mm. but when my wife i had that report mm. i just found myself kupiga nduru mm. the clothes ambao nilikuwa nimebeba zikanguka chini mm. daktari hata siku siku jua where i was now mm. uh, i was telling them please take me where she is take me take me where she is mm. take me where she is You know you know you know healing is a process yes and it it takes it takes time yes. but what helps us is to know that she's in a better place yeah so once you once you you capture that picture mm. she's in a better place yes than, than the hospital mm. a better place than the icu yes. you gain more you gain more strength yes mm. 
but, and you know also help uh, talking mm -hmm. talking it over several times also, also helps yeah uh, to bring in that uh, that healing yes mm. so now that uh, what about the children the children were, uh, were at home yeah the children were at home mm. and my first my daughter the firstborn was uh, also eager to come to the hospital mm. to see the mother mm. and that day women many women in our church they had planned to come and uh, and uh, at least to wash her mm. to make her clean other to make the hair other to make her to look smart mm. and uh, when that news broke out to me it was so hard to me and uh, the doctors encouraged me and there was a certain lady in that ward mm. who came and told me pastor you are a man of God mm. and you are a preacher. Don't just cry as if somebody who doesn't know God. Mm. Uh, just be strong. Mm. Just be strong. Mm. And uh, I had sent that uh, uh, Nini to the WhatsApp group of uh, Nairobi South region mm. that you pray for my wife. She's not in a good condition. Please help me pray for my wife mm. and even our sub region. So early in the morning, Reverend Waroi, after that news, Reverend Waroi mm. called me. Mm. We normally call ourselves, there's a name that we normally call ourselves with Reverend Waroi. Mm. He told me, my brother, how are you? I'm fine. Where are you? How is wife now? Instead of answering him, I started crying. Mm. Uh, I told him, you know what? My wife is not there. Mm. And he asked me, Mukuna kina nani apu? I told him, I'm just alone. Mm. He told me, let me come. Mm. He drove very fast mm. and he came. When I saw Warole, Warole, Reverend Warole, thank you so much, man of God from the Elephant Church with mm. he came and embraced me and he told me it is well, my brother, take heart. And also, in just that time, also the other pastor had called me and I just told them what had happened. Mm. And the pastor now were just coming. Uh, before they came, Reverend Warole uh, at least prayed with me. Mm. and encouraged me. When the pastors came, they also encouraged me, they prayed with me. Mm. And when uh, I know that my daughter was coming at one mm. with many ladies mm. from our church, mm. and I told them, please do a favor for me. Mm. When my daughter comes here mm. with those ladies from our church, mm. you know how you take care of them. Mm. Yes. Okay. I don't have that strength mm. to talk to my daughter mm. and even to those women mm. from our church. Mm. Yes. This was about uh, when, which year now? That is 2018. 20, 20, 2019. 2018. 2018. In the month of, uh, of October. Mm -hmm. Yes. And your daughter is in, is, 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 uh, was in school then or she was doing her exam? She was preparing for, for, the, for her wedding. Mm. The first born. Oh, for her wedding. Yes, and yeah. the small one was preparing for the KCP. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But when when you look back, mm. you see the Lord has strengthened you on a daily basis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. God has been so good. Even uh, when it came a time when we took her to Bari in Busia, mm. there were many challenges there because. You know, according to our places, when you live with somebody's daughter in a good way, mm. they normally want to replace with another one if there is a girl who is not married. Mm. So they brought a, another lady mm. who is not married and mm. they wanted me to marry that girl. There and then? Yes. Mm. They had brought her as a, a now to take care of, uh, of my children. Mm. Because now my wife, she's she not there, mm -hmm. my mother is not there. Mm. And they were seeing as if uh, now I need somebody who will take care of their mm. of their of their uh, that so sister. So what did you did you do? What did you do to tell them? Now, because they were just announcing it in the in the burial service, mm. even Bishop Niva can 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 <laughs> tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they were announcing it. In the, in yes, they say that we have come fully packed because we know our sister, our daughter, has not now died, mm. and we don't want anybody to come and take that position. Mm. Yes. That is the, the in-laws. Yeah, the in-laws. Mm. Uh, they had come with that girl. Mm. Wow. And telling me that this one should not go with us. She will remain here mm. to take care of the children. Mm. Uh, and I was feeling hurting and I'm still mourning. And they are, I'm 
totally confused. Even when it came a time to go and pick the body and go and bury, mm. people came, they were saying that we cannot go and bury, we must dress her. Yeah. And I was asking, how can you dress her? And she, already, she, was, she was already dressed. Mm. So there was some wrangles there, but I stood firm. Mm. And I told them, this is my wife. Mm. And I've paid all dowries that you wanted. Mm -hmm. Now she doesn't belong to you. Mm. She's mine. Mm. She's mine. If there's anything that you are asking, tell me to pay. Mm. But you not come to harass me in my, in my family. Mm. Yes. Wow. Because they were trying to stop everything. Mm. To open the, the coffin mm. and now they, they wanted to dress her. Mm. And I said, you cannot do it. With the... Is there some special dress or some special? Some, some special dress which I don't know. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm, but I refused. Uh -huh. Yes. So, but, but everything went on well. Everything went that. on well. The girl who remained back mm. with another lady and she was being taught that uh, this man, you'll take care of him. You know, when it comes time to sleep, mm. you'll go because this is your sister who has died mm. and there's no, nothing bad mm. when you get to your sister's bed. Mm. There's nothing bad with that. So you can go and sleep in that bed. Mm. So because I knew they'll do that, mm. I asked one of my friend pastor. Mm. I told him, don't go back to Nairobi. Mm. Remain here with me. Mm. Where I sleep, you will also sleep there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, that's how we did. Wow. So Pastor Ndima remained back, mm. and we were sleeping in that bed of mine with him. Mm. And the children were sleeping in another, another room mm. with that lady. Wow. Then you came, you came back to Nairobi. Yeah, I came back to Nairobi. The, the girl was not sent to, uh, to Nairobi? No. Uh. Because I rejected her, uh. now she had no place. Uh. Uh. Because I gave her money, I gave her some food that was... Uh, uh, I told her, now when it comes time that you want to go back, this is my padlock, you can lock my house, uh. and uh, this is your fare, uh. this is the food that remained, this is the oil, whatever, many things that had uh, remained back, uh. I gave her. And I told her, I'm going back to Nairobi with my children. Uh. And we left. Wow. Later on, I went back home. I found she had done chaos in that house, but uh, that didn't oh, bother she, me. Oh, she stayed, in the, she stayed there for some time? She, 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 only that, that day. Mm. But she did some, uh, some things there, pouring ashes everywhere. Mm. But uh, that could, uh, was not to bother some me. Some witchcraft stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. O okay. Mm. And, and now you have, you are married. Now I'm, I'm now remarried mm. again to a beautiful wife called Jacinta. Mm. Yes, after seeing my children, I want to go to formation. I'm mm. a preacher. Sometimes I come back home tired. Mm. Sometimes I'm not even around. And I have the small girl who is in the house sometimes. Whenever they close school, mm. she's just in the house alone. Mm. And I saw that this is somehow lonely. And uh, back home, I'm the only son to my father. Mm -hmm. There's no other, other son in that home. Mm -hmm. And I was looking myself. And you know, sometimes when you face some challenges, you try to ask yourself questions. Mm -hmm. If I die right now, who will remain with my children? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. My sister is married and she's far away from our, our home. Mm -hmm. And now the home is just there without anybody. Whenever I go to mission, the whole house, is, is, no one is the house. The little girl of me is just alone there. And I felt it's good to have somebody in my life. And that's when I prayed and God directed me to Jacinta. And we planned our wedding and we married last year in 2020. Yes. Wow. Mm. Now, uh, let, let, let's go back a little bit. Yes. The piercing of your ear. Yes. When you were a baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what did they tell you that, w that would mean? They were telling me that that was a sign of protection. Mm -hmm. The piercing of, an, of, of the ear, mm -hmm. and also they had to put a kajogo, a small chicken. Mm -hmm. That chicken could grow mm -hmm. when it become a big cock. Mm -hmm. They slaughter it and they replace it with a, another a small chicken. Mm -hmm a cock uh, that will uh, grow to be a cock. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, if you touch that, that, that cuckoo, mm -hmm. you could have touched my life. Oh. It was like, I, uh, like if, if we have connected with that, mm -hmm. with that uh, cuckoo. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and the cook was in uh, at, in when it grows it shall come in a change in a co replaced with another i know i don't know what they were saying to that that uh, mm. mm. yes and so when did you come to discover that uh, when i was in primary school there's a time i was called a name of that uh, that woman mm. that muganga mm. she was called nabgagi mm. And uh, they used to call me that name. And it reached a time that I felt this name felt no awkward. Mm. I was asking my mother, why did you call the, me this name? Mm. Uh, and she was telling me, do you know that woman, she is the one who is protecting you. Mm. You could have died like the other, the other children. Mm. And because of that, that's why you are protected. Mm. Uh, and that, this one is also a symbol of protection mm. to you. Mm. Uh, and they could do some rituals year, year, year in, year out mm -hmm. because of my life. Mm -hmm. But I know one thing that God was preserving me because he knew that uh, he, had some, he has put something in me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So did you get to a time where you now told, changed that name or how, what happened that you, uh, with the name? Uh, with the name, mm -hmm. uh, with that time I, re I rejected that name and my mother said to me, you cannot reject that name. Mm -hmm. That name belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and also I was given another name, Makoha. Makoha, that means that uh, you are collected from, from mm. Takataka. Mm. Yes, you are like, like a Takataka, you have been collected. Mm. You are like an, 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 an outcast. You are Makoha. Yes, mm. Makoha means Takataka. Mm. So, when it came a time, I told mother, I don't need those names. Mm. I don't want them. Mm. Uh, and my mother was saying, those are your names. They mm. belong to you. Mm. Now, when I got born again, Mm. And I was taught about these things. Mm. That's when I started breaking them, praying and denouncing those names, and taking even sacrifice to the altar of God, mm. and declaring that those names, I don't want them. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm. And on your ID, did you change? Did you change on your ID? My ID still belongs, it is, still remains Patrick Gomba mm. and Omondi. Mm -hmm. Yes. You didn't put But these one. names were, were, um, were just being called, mm -hmm. but they were not in the either oh, certificate the or documents. anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of calling me the names that uh, belong to the certificates, mm -hmm. they were calling me that, those names. Wow. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. well th thank you. Uh, and how is the church? The church now is good. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in, uh, in that place. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was going there, mm -hmm. somebody was discouraging me, Bishop. Mm -hmm. He was telling me, what, what are you coming to do here in Ukware? Mm. A place that is very, very hard mm. and a place that uh, you, you only thing that you can collect. Mm. He was telling me in a funny language in Kikuyu, mm. you'll only be collecting Mangotore. Mm. And I told him, my mm. friend, he was a pastor, mm. I told him, my friend, I'm mm. not coming here because of Mangotore. Mm. I'm coming here because of souls. Mm. And God has sent me here. And because he's my friend, one time was, uh, the church was uh, continuing growing, I called him for a revival. Mm. And I told him to preach. Mm. And he preached for three days. And after preaching, I asked him, my friend, do you want me to bless you with a check or do you want me to bless you with cash money? Mangotore. Yes, Mangotore. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, give me cash. I don't want check. The check can bounce. Yeah. So I gave him cash. Mm. And he was shocked. Mm. He said, this is the place. I told him, yes. Even the, this hard place, something good can come out from mm. this place. Wow. And the church has been growing. Mm. God, by the grace of God, we, God has helped us. To, we have purchased a, small, a piece of land mm. that is 40 by 100. Mm. And getting land in Kware, because it's a, a very uh, populated, densely populated place, mm. with uh, even getting even a, a space to... To put a church is not an easy thing, mm. but God has blessed us with a, that piece of land wow. that belongs to our church. Oh, praise God. Yes. Well, do you have a, 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 can you give people, anybody some direction to your church? Those who would like to come, our time is over. Yes. Maybe you can invite people to church. What time do you have your services? Where is the church? Yes. Our church, to those who are in Ongata Rongai, you, when you come to Ongata Rongai, there's a place called uh, Taskis Chap Chap. That uh, road that connects uh, to Gataka Road. You will go about uh, 200 meters. Then, formerly it was called Makaburini. And now they are building, they're constructing a market there. We refuse that name called Makaburini because the church is around near that place. So, 
Uh, you, if you come there, it's Deliverance Church Quarry City. We are very much well known in that area. And we have two services every Sunday. Our first services start at uh, 8 in the morning up to 11. And our second service starts from 11 up to 1.30. So that is where, uh, that is, uh, those are our services. And uh, if you want to contact me, also my number I can give you. And uh, you are so much welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. So what's your number? My number is 0720-241-983. I'll repeat again. My number is 0720-241-983. Thank you so much, Pastor. Really appreciate it. Thank you for coming yes. to be with us. Thank you for your story. Yes. I'm sure it's a, it's a blessing to somebody yeah. who will capture that. So, our viewers, that is, this, uh, that is uh, uh, Pastor Patrick Gomba of Deliverance Church, Quare City. And you can hear where he came from. Well, from the bondage of witchcraft as a young baby, he has been able to come out victorious as a minister of the gospel. I want you to know that God knows you by your name. He has a plan for you. He is a great shepherd. And if you surrender your life to him, he will turn your life around and your everything will be so different. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. This is Open Talk with your friend and your pastor, Bishop Mark Karioki. Uh, coming to your, right to your home to encourage you and to build you. Thank you. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a good night. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you.